Welcome to the podcast Beer and People from Beer Story Brew House. Beer Stories is normally a YouTube channel with tips, guides, and how to videos for homebrewing, but I also do interviews with exciting people in the beer industry, and these are very suited for the podcast format, and you'll find them all right here. Yeah, so I'm here with Jay now from uh, Fermenturen, and uh, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, uh, so I'm from Australia, uh, from Sydney, and uh, moved over here in 2006. Yeah. Um, so I worked in a fair few bars around town, and then uh, in 2011, uh, we opened up Fermentorn. So yeah, so uh, besides that, homebrew background also, started yeah. brewing pretty early. Yeah. Um, in Australia, it's pretty cheap to homebrew. So yeah, cool. so I started homebrewing for my dad, um at around 15 16 yeah um that was only the kits back then but yeah. uh yeah so i did that and uh realized that it was a easy way to get my hold of, well, get a hand of some beers so yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah that's how i got into beer and um yeah cool. started from there how did you end up in denmark uh my wife's danish so okay. yeah we met that explains uh, a lot yeah, yeah so we we met uh still married i've uh, been she'll kill me on this uh 13 years now, uh, yeah. Uh, we can edit that out. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. and then, um, yeah, uh, so we met, uh, she was backpacking around Australia and uh, I just uh, finished school and uh, yeah, so we met in Sydney and ended up backpacking around Australia with her. So, yeah. and after that, uh, yeah, we bought a combi, traveled around for six months in that. And then uh, after that, um, she had to come back for school and uh, yeah, I. Came over with her and uh, yeah. been here ever since. Yeah. So, yeah. But in Copenhagen? Or? In Copenhagen, yeah. 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 So, uh, well, initially uh, we lived up in Bugle for, yeah. you know, two months or something like that at her parents' place until we could find a place here. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so that's been it. I've been uh, working at uh, other bars such as the Glow Grease as a glass collector back in the day. And okay. uh, yeah, uh, Greg, who owns that, now owns Bootleggers. And, yeah. yeah, he's gone on to actually open up some craft beer bars himself. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And how did you, you get into the craft beer uh, market? Uh, well, uh, working at um, Southern Cross, I was managing there for quite a while. And uh, we had lots of different um, Australian beers uh, at the time, like Little Creatures and uh, yeah, a few others. And uh, we had almost 35 different beers. And uh, yeah, and we had some friends who also worked at Arstel and Lord Nelson. And yeah. so there was a nice kind of beer community around which you would yeah, go visit friends. And uh, so that's how I kind of got into it. But I, I've always kind of drunk, well, actually I drank stouts before I drank Pilsners or anything like that. So okay. I was always looking for dark beer. And yeah, uh, yeah Denmark was also, yeah, had some really nice dark beers at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think around 2006 and stuff when I first came over here, there was, uh, I went to the beer festival pretty like almost the week after I arrived. Okay. Um, and uh, there was uh, Mikula just released his Big Eat Breakfast. And then yeah. uh, 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 Ufer Bleaton had Ufer Bleaton Porter and there was Yeti and there was, uh, yeah, there was just amazing beers uh, yeah. at the time. I hadn't tried anything like it before. So. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, cool. yeah. So that's I've always been interested in running bars and uh, yeah. and pubs, particularly. And craft beer was a way to be independent yeah. as well. So yeah. that was the important part. Awesome. So, so uh, when did you open up a uh, family tour? Uh, two thousand and eleven. So yeah. yeah, ten years. We're coming up at the end of uh, September twenty sixth. Yeah. So yeah. So it's been getting better and better each year, despite yeah. COVID. And but stuff. you didn't start off with. Uh, with your own beer, like from Dry and Bitter, did you? No, no. Uh, we had uh, some beers from Crooked Moon, uh, from the other partner here, yeah. Simon. Uh, in there, he um, was brewing that when he was out at Nobel Brookhouse as well. Okay. Uh, we had a lot of beers from Beer Here, and uh, yeah, the um, Dry and Bitter beers came in maybe five, six yeah. years ago. So small so, breweries, uh, yeah, craft yep, beer, yeah. definitely. And we've always had a really good range of uh, Belgian beers as well. So yeah. that, that's been the important thing, getting. A, a good range, uh, not just uh, you know twenty IPAs or anything yeah. like that. But, okay, um, so yeah, one beer for everyone. Yeah, that you could you could have a session and go around the board, yeah. and uh, you can try a different 
different saisons, different, if you like, sour beers. There's not just, you know, all Lambics, but there's also Berliner Weisses. Or if you like Berliner Weisses, there's also like sour saisons. And, you know, so you can have a yeah, bit of interest, I suppose, yeah. in uh, different styles. Yeah. So. Cool. So what sets uh, Fermenturen uh, apart from other pubs? Um, when we first started it out, uh, we kind of thought the important part was accessibility. Uh, we've always tried to keep our prices quite reasonable. Yeah. Um, we, when we first started, all of our prices were 50 kroner for no matter what you bought. Um, so, and we try and keep that to some extent. Now, yeah. uh, we, you know, our prices have gone up a little since then, um, but also range, as I was saying. Um, so you can always come down here. There's always several stouts, several IPAs, several yeah. sours. Uh, there will always be Pilsner and wheat beer, obviously, but yeah. Um, yeah. So there's good selection. Um, also, our, how many beers is in your selection right now? Uh, we got 24 on. 24. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Cool. Uh, besides that, beer garden always helps. Um, yeah. Yeah. So being able to have a place open um, over summer, which you want to go to, yeah. And um, I suppose consistency. That's what we've really been going for. Like we never closed. Um, so even when COVID was happening, we were open as a takeaway, and yeah. um, so I think that's also helped the uh, help people get to uh, understand that they can always come down here. Yeah. Um, and that that's where we've seen the scene change a little bit. When we first opened, a lot of bars were closed Mondays or Tuesdays, yeah. or yeah. Um, weird opening hours, and uh, where we just we've always stayed open yeah. and tried okay. to. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um. So what's your mission here? What what do you want to accomplish? Is it uh, just um, to spread the knowledge of good beer, or yeah, what I is think, it uh, that drives you? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think people, I think uh, for it to be a pub first and foremost, I think um, having a, you know, craft beer is a part of having a good pub, but that's not our main focus. Is good atmosphere, people to be able to be comfortable and have it as their second living room. Yeah. And then um, and then the beers kind of, I don't want to say second, but it's um, it's uh, that people, you know, they want to come here. Look, you can buy cra good craft beer yeah. and you can sit in at home and drink it whenever. But to get people to actually come down out of the house and experience things, I think you need a good good yeah. premise with a good atmosphere first yeah. and then bring uh, people together and definitely yeah. and yeah and so yeah. people can talk about it good bartenders to be able to chat about different styles good direction and then you get to talk about other things when you with a good beer in your hand yeah so, exactly yeah. <laughs> cool so what what do you think here you've been in the craft beer scene for a long time now yeah. how did you see it evolve to what it is today yeah i mean i I think value for money was something which first happened where people were trying to, um, a lot of the market was going for big, um, big alcoholic beers. Uh, you went, if you had to pay 60 kroner or something for a beer, yeah. you wanted 8%. Um, so yeah. a lot of people were going for bang for buck. And I think uh, nowadays, just the sessionability, people are prepared to, yeah. um, you know, drink 2% beers and 3% yeah. beers yeah. and be it's more happy about with the flavor them. and the complexity yeah. and, yeah. and have that value that or they feel that there's value there. They're yeah. not just going for the strongest stuff. So that's one direction it's changed. Yeah. Uh, sours have opened up to yeah. be not specialist, but uh, everyday beer, which yeah. is great. Um, so we get a lot of customers. Um, Sometimes still surprises me when we our first 10, 15 beers of the day are sour beers and yeah. you're expecting a Pilsner or something or yeah. you know, IPA. Um, yeah, the whole West Coast thing is kind of coming back, which is really nice. Yeah, because um, the Nipper and the double IPA and the triple IPA has really yeah. taken over lately. Definitely. But West definitely. Coast is still a great beer. Yeah. Uh, it's just not the same, but it's, an, it's a different beer, but yeah. it's great. Yeah, so. so and we're finding people coming back to wanting bitterness as yeah. well. And I think um, it's funny, uh, our brewers, they love Pilsners. So they're going to be, <laughs> you know, if you ask them what's popular, it's Pilsners. But uh, I think if you ask a lot of our bar staff, actually Saison's and Belgian uh, pale ales like uh, Terrace Bulba is a real favorite for them. They look, because yeah. they're trying a lot of beers, um, they're looking for something which is dry and maybe a bit more bitter to yeah. continually come back to. Um, yeah. yeah. But it's interesting you you mentioned uh, Pilsner because most people may they don't know that uh, a craft beer Pilsner 
is you can't compare it to a commercial pilsner like Carlsberg yeah. or you can't compare it. It's a oh, totally no, it's, different beer. Yeah. Uh, so the pilsner can be amazing as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, I think there's still a lot of range for it to come with. Uh, people are, you know, brewing different styles. Yeah, the Bohemian well. style is, is so. coming in now as well. And yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So, and I think uh, as more people are prepared to spend, you know, 50, 60 kroner on a Pilsner, then there's room for breweries to be able to produce Pilsners where before, um, when people are only prepared to spend 20 kroner or 30 yeah. kroner on a beer, there was no room for you know, to take up tank space for a craft brewery. So that was yeah, one of exactly. the- Exactly, yeah. Um, but that's exciting too, yeah. Um, so what motivates you to keep doing this? Because I, if you yeah. both work at the brewery and you work here, you must work all day. <laughs> yeah, um, I think uh, part of it is what motivates me regarding the bar is um, there's, just a chance to have new experiences. Um, I really love actually being behind the bar. Uh, yeah. That's uh, so when I've been here for a few too many beers, I yeah. like to come back behind the bar as well. Uh, I think uh, what's great about Firm Dawn is uh, sometimes you can just have one of the best nights ever and you weren't expected to do anything that night. It was just, it seems to be like this common story of, I was only going there for one beer. Yeah. And then you end up having this great night and yeah. uh, regretting cool. the next day. Um, that's that having that uh, spontaneity is something which, um, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so yeah, that's cool. Um, so, where do you get your beers from? Yeah, uh, so a large part portion is obviously from our brewery, Dry and Bitter, but yeah. uh, other places, a lot of Danish breweries. Uh, yeah, we've always had stuff from beer here, a uh, lot from Gamma, um, yeah, Ale Farm, uh, but uh, yeah, a lot of Belgian beers, a uh, lot of German beers. I mean, uh, that's also something which we've been trying to spread the range of where we get our beers uh, and making sure that people can always also get, a, say, a Rausch beer, for example. So yeah, yeah, so that's been one of our taps where it almost never changes. And um, yeah, so you can come down here and, um, yeah, always try something like that. So, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So everywhere. Cool. So everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So. What's your best seller? Um, best seller, I suppose. Uh, our house beers. Uh, that's. I mean, that's because they're quick, and we try and or uh, well, they're good quality as well. But yeah, uh, yeah that sells well. Uh, but that's our IPA, and our uh, usually we have a pilsner of what we make as well. But. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, different styles, session beers, uh, probably our biggest seller, if our, depends on who the bartender is. But uh, <laughs> we, yeah, I mean, you ask, a lot of people ask what their favorite beers are. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they'll push their customer towards that style, obviously. And uh, we encourage everyone to try all the beers so they can actually have an informed in opinion on what they like. And yeah, uh, yeah to be able to, yeah, what they like and, Pass yeah, it off on the customer. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So the staff knows most of the beer? Yeah, uh, definitely. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, we change our beers quite regularly though. Yeah. Uh, so it sometimes takes a day or so to like really catch up and go through it. But yeah. uh, we encourage like everyone to, you know, try all the IPAs and uh, it's more, um, yeah, more, more knowing maybe the difference in between the IPAs than, uh, yeah, specifically like where they're from. So if someone's saying like this one's too sweet, where do I go from there? Or I'm looking for yeah. something more grassy than more fruity. Because I mean, there's only so many combinations of Simcoe and Pilsner yeah. and stuff <laughs> what people uh, like, and uh, Citro what people use. But you know, if people are looking for something grassy, well then you want to go towards you know, something with Chinook and stuff like that. But yeah. so, yeah, I think yeah. as long as the quality is good, um, it's more hitting that flavor profile people are looking for than yeah. actually the brand yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. Exactly. So, what do you think the new black is right now? You mentioned sours. Is that the... Uh, and, and what's the next thing you think? To be honest, the alcohol-free beer is probably going to be the, yeah, the big so too, thing. Actually, yeah. uh, that's the biggest grower. Yeah. Uh, we went from selling maybe, you know, a case every two weeks, three weeks, to now going through two, three cases a week of alcohol-free beer. Yeah. Um, different people are drinking alcohol-free beer as well. It's not just people who are pregnant, but also 
um, people in between having a beer or they're waiting for someone yeah. or it's yeah or they've had five beers and they just want to still stay out and yeah. have a beer so yeah. that's i think that's improved uh, a huge amount um, yeah and especially that low abv beers uh, just at one percent or something uh, yeah i actually have a recipe at home I, i'm gonna brew next yeah uh, inspired by david heath if yeah. you know him sure. um, there's a i think there's a market there and um, definitely uh, yeah. i mean abletoff's doing some great stuff as well we sell a lot of abletoff as yeah. well but uh that yeah they've got two or three like low abv beers which uh yeah that would be fantastic yeah. to drink at home as yeah. well and um, it's really hard to so, do well yeah yeah but, uh, when when they do well it's, it's still a great beer definitely so, definitely yeah. so yeah uh besides that um yeah i'd love to see i mean uh some sour saisons are starting to come uh a little bit more popular like that kind of table beer which is a little bit more a um, little sour bit complex like i think uh burning sky does some fantastic stuff and uh we when that's on the board we sell a ton of that okay. as well um yeah. yeah i mean new england so just a great accessibility or yeah. accessible beer for people as well yeah like uh who mightn't be used to all those flavors and all that hops but suddenly it's like okay well that's fruity and yeah. you know yeah. so they yeah. get into it so yeah that's yeah alcohol free beer and then some others yeah so, yeah oh, cool um if you you can mention your own as well but what's yeah. your favorite beer amongst all these Ooh. at the moment i'm drinking burning sky the um saison deity um besides that i really like the oud Bissel, three lambic uh it's just a nice Super well Lambic, balanced yeah, okay. Lambic. Yeah. Uh, the guys from Slowburn are doing fantastic stuff as well. Uh, yeah, they're just a small brewery, but they're doing amazing stuff. Uh, yeah. Always super fresh. Uh, Christian Bailale is something I can always go to. Um, that's yeah. that's just a yeah. It's our probably best selling beer, a dry and bitter, but it's just consistently really good and um, yeah, low percentage as well. Yeah, that's um, a session IPA, right? Yeah. 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 yeah cool. So, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So uh, the last question: Why should people visit uh, Famitora, and, and what uh, what experience do they get when they leave here? Yeah. Um. I think. Uh, how would you say? We try and be a bit of a egalitarian pub, so everyone's pretty equal when they come here. It's like, uh, hopefully, you're getting everyone gets great service. They're getting welcome. Uh, that they feel the prices uh, something you can consistently come here you're not just here for one beer type yeah. thing um yeah independent music great atmosphere hopefully and yeah. uh yeah and uh yeah something for everyone i think uh there's outside there's inside uh we've got a really nice beer garden out there and, yeah um yeah so there's something for any time anyway yeah. so yeah cool. and hopefully it's been a great thing with COVID not over, but the restrictions finishing. So yeah. now we can get people back at the bar as well. So yeah. it's have that atmosphere of like being able to talk to someone for rather than just being transactional. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah. Cool. So, Great. Oh, well, uh, thank cool. you for the interview. And, uh, thank you. Yeah. Right, good to meet you. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the podcast Beer and People from Beer Stories. Visit my YouTube channel, Beer Stories, for how-to videos for homebrewing, tips, tricks, guides, interviews, and much more. You can also follow my blog on Instagram or Facebook, or visit my website, beerstories.dk.